James and Zach here from Denali Weld. Today we're going to go through some of our frequently asked questions that we receive, get you guys a lot of information on just the presettings in our machine, the parameters, and what all those different parameters do. Yes, sir. Kind of the, one of the first things we're going to be talking about is going over, like James said, the general settings in the machine. Right on the home page there, those settings that you're going to be changing and using every day. It's going to depend on what material you're using, what wire you're using, everything like that. So if you want to get into it, James. Yeah, first thing we always get asked about our safety with the machines. What do you think about all that safety? Yeah, the biggest thing we always say with the laser welder is obviously the largest concern is your eyes. Um, we always say the machine can't kill you, you know, on a, on a normal MIG welding, MIG TIG welding, stick welding machine. You get a couple amps running through you, it could be the end. So we always say, like I said, the big concern is your eyes. Me, myself, James, we've all gotten burned by the laser. It's really not a big deal. I actually have one right now. You can see it's just a very small scab. So like I said, the big concern is your eyes. You always want to make sure that you either have your laser glasses, your laser helmet equipped, and even going beyond that, having some things like beam shutters, interlocks, all that type of stuff to keep yourself and the people around you safe. Yeah, and talking about when you got burned, it felt similar to a yeah. MIG, MIG burn. I would say this is almost even more preferable because it doesn't get the size of a quarter and get all bubbly. It's just a very small kind of scab, so. Yeah, it's just one of those things, always make sure that your hands are in a good position for your tacking yep. of the weldment yep. and make sure that there's nobody down Yep. down that field of view of the laser. And that's one of the most common ways people get burned is you're going to tack up your part, let's just say it's a butt joint, and you have your hand out front here and you go to tack it like that and it reflects up and get your fingers. So we always say tack away first and then you can come back and tack close to yourself. So yep, That's the best way to do it. Um, another question that we always get, wattage. Yep. We're used to amperage, voltage, match with your wire feed speed. Yep. What do you see as the difference here with wattage in the laser? I would say generally it's pretty similar. We, we always try to loop it back to with, with laser welding, with any welding, it's all about heat input. We want more penetration, we're gonna have to add more heat. And usually the easiest way to do that is increase your wattage. Like James said, your wattage is your direct heat input, just like your amperage, your, your voltage would be on kind of any other machine. So like you said, you know, th this is gonna be your, your, your biggest setting that is gonna allow you to achieve more penetration. It's gonna be the biggest setting that you're gonna change when going from material to material, different thicknesses, things like that. So. Like I said, the, the terminology can be different, but we always try to look back to heat input. You need more heat, turn that wattage up. And we'll get into it later, there is some other ways that you can add some heat into the part as well. Yeah, there's multiple ways to add heat into that part. And like Zach said, we'll get into that later. There's also ways to take heat out of that part yep. to get you less warping, better aesthetics in that weld, especially in the stainless industry. Yep. Right now we're running 1 16th wire on 090 aluminum. As you can see, based on the weld profile and the inaccurate melting, that our weld is too cold for this material. Now what you're seeing is that same thickness aluminum at the proper wattage at 750 watts. As you can see in the weld profile, everything is melting in, clean toes, weld looks great. Now we're running that same thickness aluminum again. As you can see how the weld is acting, we are way too hot for this material, and that's why you're having that uneven weld. And as you'll see, the back side of this plate will be completely burned through. Um, next question we have is laser frequency. Laser frequency always seems to be a big toss up in opinions on what it actually does. What have you found from running our machines? From what we found, especially with laser cleaning, it seems to make the biggest difference. Um, increasing the value does seem to increase penetration as well. So we always say laser frequency is another way to get a little bit more penetration without adding more heat to the part. We always say too though, it's not gonna be a guarantee. It's not gonna be 5,000 Hertz as guaranteed, you know, eighth inch penetration, but it's one of those last resort efforts. You know, if you're, you're at maximum laser power, you slow down your wobble frequency, your PWM's at 100%, and you just can't seem to get it, it would be worth turning up your laser frequency to attempt to you know, get that more penetration, so. Yeah, that's mainly when we're pushing the machine to the limits. Yeah. On a 2,000 watt, our limit's right about a quarter inch on a butt joint. You could go quarter to three eighths, but that's when you'll have to get into that laser frequency yep. and make sure you're getting all that heat input. Really right slow down your wire feed, let a lot of that heat go into the part, so. So now what you're seeing is the proper wattage for the weld with a laser frequency of just 100 hertz, the minimum that the machine will run at. Now 
Now we're running with all of the same settings as the previous weld, but this time we upped our laser frequency to 5,000 hertz from the baseline of 100 hertz. Again, we have all the same wattage settings and wobble frequency. Now our laser frequency is at the maximum of 50,000 hertz. As you can see, that depth of penetration is changing throughout this weld. Hey guys, I just want to go over the penetration on these welds and kind of explain what we're looking at. So here we have 100 hertz on our laser frequency. Here we have 5,000 and then here we have 50,000. As you can see, um, we did lose a little bit of penetration on the middle one, but that was probably because of the, the, the joint itself. But at 50,000, we are having the most penetration. Another thing you can look at is these craters. Um, the craters on the um, 100 hertz was not as pronounced. The 5,000 hertz was a little bit more pronounced, and you can really see on this 50,000 hertz how much more pronounced that crater is. It's giving it a little bit more penetration and really allowing it to blow that material through. Um, next question we have is pulse width modulation percentage. Yeah, this one can be another tricky one, but really, once again, it's gonna, we see the biggest use of the setting on cleaning, and really on the welding side, you're only gonna utilize it when you're welding high reflecting materials like copper, bronze, brass, and even some cases aluminum, depending on the finish and things like that, so. Yeah, with aluminum, I've had great success, even yeah. if you're dropping at 2%, yeah. just to get that better, that better bead yeah. quality, that better weld in there. And what we found is it pulses the laser a little bit, it'll agitate the puddle, because things like aluminum brass, they are very reflective when they are in a molten state, so it's pretty much like a mirror. And you, you might have even noticed that welding yourself, with those materials that sometimes the laser reflects off and kind of just goes in every other direction. You know, things might start, you know, burn. If you got a piece of paper, right here it might even set it on fire so by agitating that puddle a little bit it allows it to absorb more of the heat once again creating you know more penetration and overall better weld so yeah and with that pulse width modulation percentage on the cleaning side for that aspect when you're cleaning a more reflective material it does the same thing yep. with allowing that laser to actually hit your material not just reflect off of that highly reflective material and it'll also get you a finer finish with less potential etching based on your PWM percentage. And the easiest way to think about it, when the PWM is at 100%, the laser is in a continuous state. So it's always putting heat into that part. Just like it would be on a pulse welding setup, by pulsing the laser, we're putting less heat into it, which is gonna leave less of those etching marks, gonna you know, engrave it a little bit less, things like that. So like James said, it will overall give you a much smoother surface finish. Here we are still at the same 800 watts that we were running before. As you can see, with a 20% PWM percentage, we are not able to even melt the filler metal or the base material. You'll also notice a different sound coming from the laser. Now we are at a PWM of 60%. As you can start to see the difference now, we're able to melt that filler metal, but we're not having that clean, consistent weld on this aluminum. Now our PWM is at the standard 100%. As you can see, the clean weld. The biggest difference here when adjusting your PWM percentage is they're just fine adjustments. If you make large adjustments, like going down to that 20%, you're not gonna have the great results that you should have with the Denali weld laser. So as you can see here, with a PWM percentage of 20, there was not nearly enough power to melt the filler metal or the base material. At 60%, we were getting a lot closer, but still not there. Back up to 100% PWM, we're able to have that accurate weld that we expect out of our laser and have the results that you're looking for. Make sure you stay tuned for part two of this video where we're gonna have more filming of more of our settings and how they affect your weld. And after pulse width modulation, we have the scale welding feature on our machines, which I know that's one of our favorite features. Yep. yep. Yeah, it just pretty much mimics a pulse TIG, you know, really flashes the laser on and off. You, you can hear it very distinctly when you're welding that ch -ch -ch kind of sound. It's going to leave you a, you know, a stack of dimes effect. Some people prefer the appearance, some people don't. But the biggest thing for us is kind of cutting down on that heat input. Being able to weld 12 inches of 22 gauge and have very minimal warping, very, very minimal burn through, things like that. So that's really kind of where it's shown for us. And the biggest advantage 
for us has been being able to adjust those pulses. You can adjust your duration and your intervals. So if you want really fast, really tight pulses, you can. If you really want those nice slow, long pulses, give you those nice kind of big fat dimes on there, that's also an option that you can do as well. So. Yeah, and that spacing will also change based on your wire feed speed. Yep. Once you get into playing with the wobble frequency, that will also make a difference in the way that that scale weld feature yep. actually works on the material. Yeah, 100%. Um, so here we're showing you the comparison between a straight stringer with the laser welder, and then we're going to turn on the scale welding feature, which will lay down a stack of dimes so you can see that side-by-side -side comparison on penetration and heat input. This is the scale weld feature turned on. As you can see, that nice stack of dimes, very aesthetically pleasing, and it also will help with your heat input control on thinner materials. Um, presettings. Everybody always asks how we get our presettings, where they come from, yep. how do we know that they're good presettings? Yeah, so for us, we, we have our factory, our kind of lab testing facility. They're the ones that go through the presets, they do cut and etches on all the materials, to consider there's adequate penetration. Full penetration in this industry is you know 80% or above. So like I said, our presets, they're always set for at least 80% or above penetration. Another thing too, if you guys are doing thinner materials and you want no burn through, you want no bluing on the backside of your stainless, we always recommend if you're using those presets, dial it back maybe 200, 300 watts. Those presets, they're set for full penetration like we said. So there's always gonna be you know right on the edge of that maximum heat, maximum warping, all that stuff. So like I said, if you're really trying to avoid bluing, you're not super concerned with max penetration, and you just want to keep the part from warping and stuff and you're using the presets, please dial it back a little bit and you'll have a lot better results. So Yeah, and with that as well, if you don't want to adjust the wattage on it, you can always kick your wire feed speed up yep. and be able to have a little bit faster travel, which will then mitigate that heat input into the joint, give you less bluing, less penetration, less yep. burn through. And just like we said earlier, you know, all this kind of comes back to normal welding. It's all going to be about your heat input, how much warping, how much penetration, all that. It's just about your heat input. It's just the terminology is different and kind of the welding itself is a little bit different. So, Yeah, and with the welding being a little bit different, when you have a welder's brain and you're playing with the machine, once you know what all these settings do, that's when the machine really starts to shine through for what it's fully capable of. And another advantage some of you welders might have is that it does react similarly on the materials that you would find normally, you know, TIG welding or MIG welding. It's, you know, the, the metallurgy stays the same. So when you put too much heat into it, you'll see, you know, a gray weld on stainless. When you put too much heat into it, you'll see the burn through on the aluminum. So just like I said, use those telltale signs that you would use in your normal welding applications and you can apply those to laser welding as well.